Hello, Blizzard fans! This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Blizzard upload. This is a game between Fur Ire and Gosu Mott on Dash and Terminal, the latter edition. This is not actually a random versus random replay. This is just a game that was played before the latest patch. I'm grateful for the fact that the latest patch did not break my ability to cast replays that were played before the latest patch. And if that, that was not confusing enough, this is a PvP on Dash and Terminal, the latter edition. On the right side of the map, we have the red Protoss player. It is for ire. And in the top of Dash and Terminal, the latter edition, we have the blue Protoss player. It is Gosu Mott. I'm pretty sure it's Mott. I don't think it's Mott because there are two T's and an E there. Actually, it could be. I don't know. English is hard, and that might not even be English. That's how hard it is. All right, so. Again, the latest patch for Legacy of the Void is out. I did actually do a quick video just discussing the changes to it. There are some pretty major things to consider, so keep in mind, as you watch this replay, it is not on the latest version of Legacy of the Void. Uh, something I am going to apologize for, but don't worry about it. It's still crazy Legacy of the Void fun time goodness. What I'm interested in seeing is if players are actually going to use the Disruptor in this replay. This is actually after a nerf to the Disruptor. It's not as ubiquitous as we have seen in the past. And again, uh, I think there are some changes made to it as well in the latest, latest patch. So we'll have to see if it goes into further disuse or if it actually comes back. But regardless, send in your replays to falconpaladin at gmail.com on the latest patch of Legacy of the Void, which is any games played after last Thursday. And I'll take a look at them, and if they're great, I will cast them. If they're fun, I will cast them. And even if they're not great or fun, sometimes I will cast them anyway. So... No guarantees, though. Please don't get mad if I don't get around to casting your replay. I do get a little bit overloaded from time to time. It's not because I don't love you. It's just because I have three kids and I only have so many hours in the day. All right, that is out of the way. Not choosing to actually wall off here is for ire. Meanwhile, our friend Gosu is walling off. Not a great choice for Protoss. You can get Immortals down here and Stalkers down here and just smash away at your gateway, at your Cybernetics core, and then bad things happen. So I'm not sure if Blue is going to be ready here or not, but both players essentially doing the same thing. Cybernetics core coming up, gateways coming on up, 22 workers each, 22, 23 supply for each of these players. It is a mirror match in every way possible at this point. Both players have a very specific build. They are going for, they are getting stalkers. Mothership core coming out now for Gosu and is for Ire actually going to get one? No, we're actually getting warp gate. There's that stalker. Like I said, another gateway throwing up pylons in different places just to make sure blink stalkers don't come and ruin the day and I don't know, maybe an oracle as well I'm not sure what that one's scouting for exactly but twilight council is actually the cho choice for gosu so getting that mothership core getting the twilight council i think gosu might have the upper hand in this game going a one base play ah against there's the expansion coming up for for ire so that is interesting enough mothership core harass actually Gonna come in and see what it can do, but there is definitely a Stalker. Get out of here, Mothership Core. Run away. The Stalker does so much DPS against you. And there we go. I mean, just three or four hits. It's already out of shields and down into the health, into the armor there. Yikes. Run, run as fast as you can. And there comes the Stargate. So as soon as the Mothership Core goes, for Ire getting the Stargate, I'm not sure what that's going to be for. Either Void Rays or an Oracle Harass. Again, that'd be super late in a Legacy of the Void replay, though. Just because Oracles need to show up sooner than the, you know, four, five, six minute mark, to be honest. Mothership Core, very brave, though. Coming in to try to mess with these drones. That Stalker not happy about it. Shooting up at it. Chasing it away. But Mothership Core not actually being available for a Photon Overcharge. I guess maybe Iron's not actually worried about an attack coming in. Uh, from... Hmm... I don't know. Uh, Ghost do not maybe worried about the attack coming in from 4 Ire anytime soon. But actually heading on back now, we are getting a forge as well for Gosu. We are chrono boosting out the blink. And yeah, should be a pretty good game here for just a little bit. Both players are macroing up. They both do have their nexus. Gosu's is a little bit later than for Ire. These guys aren't mining. There you go. Just had to select them and they started mining. See, look, you can actually do stuff in replays. Bet you didn't know that. What is this? A phoenix. An actual phoenix. Not a hallucinated phoenix. Probably going to be used for scouting. A single phoenix is not too useful on its own. It can pick stuff up, but it can't shoot while it's picking up. And so that causes it some problems, to be sure. But anyway, the stalkers are going to shoot it away. It does have a lot of health. Are we going to try to kill the mothership core with this phoenix? No, we are not. Because we are down out of shields again on this guy. And just going to fly around, check to make sure that base is there. It's not a crazy one base play coming from Gosu either. So both players kind of sticking on this two-base play at this point. 
It's going to be Stalkers. Ooh, Robo Facility just about to finish for our friend for ire. Where is it? There it is, warping right on in. And a Forge popping up as well, Crota boosting out an Observer. Observers are nice. An Oracle here. Now, Oracles are good, a little bit better in the mid to late game than they used to be because they have the Stasis Ward ability. Here it is. Places a Cloaked Stasis Ward at the target location. Once activated by an enemy ground unit, the ward traps them in stasis for 21 seconds. Trapped units cannot be attacked or affected by abilities. So you can throw those around the map and pick up scouting units. You can get groups of zerglings. You can get attacking zealots. You can get attacking bio balls and hold them in place for a really long time in game. Again, it's uh, it's not super long, but man, it feels long when you got units trapped in there. That is absolutely for sure. So we'll have to see if the oracle is going to be used that way or... If it's going to be used as part of the main attack, which would be weird. Or for defense, which is also kind of weird. Hmm. Adept's coming out, though. So there we go. For Ire showing us our very first Legacy of the Void units so far in this match, which is very good. For Ire is going a long way to making sure they're not going to lose because they did not make Legacy of the Void units. Observer popping out now for Gosu Mott. At the same time, Oracle Harass here at the five-minute mark is super late, especially, oh, because there's a Photon Cannon up. But maybe over here could get some workers. This is definitely out. You can't do anything over here, but hmm, be very, very careful. Oracle, oh, takes a shot from the Photon Cannon. Comes around to the other side. Oh, Photon Overcharge pops up. Definitely chases it away. Throws down Revelation on all the buildings just to see what's going on. And there's also a cannon in the mineral line here. Maybe we could work on these workers here at the top. Warping in a Stalker to deal with the Oracle. Like I said, the Oracle Harass is just a little bit too late. Maybe a lot of it too late. I don't know exactly what to say, but here comes a push with a bunch of stalkers. Again, not making legacy of the vo void units for shame, Gosu. But yep, coming right in. Blink stalker. Excellent blink back. We need to get a photon overcharge up, and there it is. Overcharge pops up. Just blinks away. The stalkers are not in any hurry to kill things right now. Going to wait for that overcharge to subside. Do we have enough for another one? We do. We have enough energy on the mothership core for another one. Which might be a bit of a concern. Taking out that scouting probe with the Zelnaga Watchtower. Blinking up onto the high ground. Did they blink? Yeah. Just came around. It wasn't really necessary to do that. But maybe just showing off the blink ability for this person who's watching this replay. Which is me. Ooh, Immortal, Adepts, and Stalkers. I like this composition against Pure Stalker. The Immortal especially doing extra damage to those armored. 55 damage to armored units. Adepts not doing extra two armored units only 11 but they're pretty tanky they do have 90 shields 90 hit points and one armor as well on top of that without any upgrades whatsoever actually getting ground armor level one on the way that's going to help those adepts even more to be even more tanky than they were before is that a third nexus it is third nexus coming up for gosu mott so recognizing that our friend for ire is playing a little bit defensively our friend gosu is taking that third base the Phoenix scouting things around. Again, that's a hallucinated Phoenix, however. Ghost Mott does have their own immortals at this point and actually getting a Templar Archives. Where is it? Gateway, gateway. Templar Archives. There it is, up here. So might get some Archons, might get some Templar. Pretty fun stuff either way. Both players just kind of dancing. Not much really has died in this game. Eight probe. What did eight probes die? Did an Oracle get in there and get some harass done? Where's our Oracle? Units tab. The Oracle died. Huh, maybe I missed some harass there. All right, maybe the Oracle paid for itself after all. In which case, I apologize, Oracle. I said you were super late. But in the end, maybe you did your job. So anyway, so some workers have died. A single Adept, a single Stalker, a single Phoenix. Really not too much at all at this point. So just kind of sitting around, massing up the ground army here. Nobody's making Colossus because Colossus are terrible in Legacy of the Void. What is this? Attack level 3 popping on up now for our friend Gosu Mott. Definitely going to make these stalkers a lot more effective as well as the immortals at the same time. And yep, it is Templar. Are we researching Storm? No. So we have feedback, but don't have Storm. I guess we could make some Archons if we wanted to. But again, both players just dancing. Does it look like for Ayer is going to move out? Mm, no, just the dance. Just moving back and forth. It's like a 7th grade dance where the girls are over here and the boys are over here. And both sides are really too nervous to go over and talk to each other, i.e. shoot each other in the face. So they just kind of sit on their respective sides of the room. The music is playing. The music is beautiful. It's playing Forever Young by Alphaville. But nobody wants to go make the first move. And that's exactly what's going on here in this Protoss versus Protoss. Third base is well established for Ire as well. So three base versus three base. Nobody really has the upper hand. Friar does have 127 supply. The poke in and the blink out. See? 
that was a boy coming over and being like, hey, do you want to dance? And then all the girls kind of laughed a little bit and he backed out immediately and just ran for his life. That's exactly what I would have done in seventh grade if I had the courage to even go up and ask a girl in the first place. You don't want to know about me in seventh grade. It's not a fun story. Anyway, back to the game at hand. Fourth base now coming up for Gosu Mott saying, all right, you want to sit back and turtle? And I will make another base to go up on you four bases to three adepts using sonic transfer just to scout things out and didn't actually cancel are we going for it maybe getting out of range of the photon overcharge trying to snipe down that archon can we get it guardian shield popping up it's red that's kind of neat coming on over getting an angle where that overcharge isn't actually a factor they want to get that archon but they can't quite get it and it's going to back out see just little pokes just little prods here and there nothing too crazy going on from either player Nobody really wants to commit at this point because committing means you could possibly lose. Hey, that's like another relationship metaphor from StarCraft. Hmm, somebody should write a book about this. Oh, oh, Fryer has Archons of their own right now with plus two attack and plus one shields. Not super useful. Really need plasma shields for those Archons, but that is A-OK. -okay. And a Void Ray. Why not? Get a Void Ray, get Zealot Legs, get Ground Armor level two. There's a lot of gas in the bank for Fryer. Might as well get all this stuff that you need. And a fourth base. This is definitely the biggest macro game for Protoss versus Protoss I have seen on my channel. Usually it's like a two base versus two base. One player does a build that works really well against the other player's build. Everybody smashes face at the end. But so far, four base to four base. Nobody's really getting the upper hand at this point. It's 62 to 62 harvesters. Very even all the way across the board. Chrono Boost is not benefiting anybody more than the other because they both have it. Plus three being researched for four ire. Great stuff. Actually managing to get air weapons level one because I have a single void where you might as well upgrade it. A lot more gateways coming up as well. Four ire doing a good job with that. Keeping up on the production facilities even as the income increases. And are we doing the same thing? Yeah, extra gateways being added on back here. Same thing for Gosu Mott. So... It looks like the MMR system might have actually improved to the point in Legacy of the Void where players are playing against equally skilled players. I know for a while there it was like Grandmaster against Bronze and stuff, and it was very sad to see that happening. But now it looks like we have a pretty much appropriately leveled players going against appropriately leveled players. And I think this is probably a Platinum game, I'd have to say. Just because Bronze and Silver players don't usually manage to do get this far into the game, but... Here we go. Oh no, Red Army going to get pincered. And they are flanked from both sides by Archons, by Immortals, by Stalkers, by Adepts. And there's the recall. Oh, the recall gets canceled. I think the Mothership Core got sniped down. Forced to retreat. Four Iyer is running away as fast as it can. Adepts dealing with Adepts back here. Four Iyer in a lot of trouble. Sonic Transfer popping up, trying to catch these guys, prevent them from going home. And they do. They get right in the way. They take down an Archon by themselves. This Void Ray doesn't have any kills whatsoever. Pushing ever steadily forward and forward is Gosu Mott. And are we going to actually push into this base again? Photon Overcharge not available because the Mothership Core is gone. There we go. Blinking right on in. Going to try to deal with this army. Time Warp being used to slow things down just a little bit. These Immortals doing okay for themselves. Hardened Shields coming up as well. It's trying to snipe down Gateways. Gateways are exploding in a huge gout of flame. Archon gonna die. No, down to 31, and then that does actually end up getting killed by some Adepts and some Immortals. Just moving up to the second base. I really don't know what Gosu Mod is trying to do here. There we go. Splitting up, sending some Archons and some Immortals over there while keeping the army pinned inside this third base. A good decision here by Gosu Mod. The army is trapped into a corner. All that's left are some Adepts, a Stalker, and a single Immortal. The Immortal does have two kills, then Nexus explodes the adepts coming from the other side trying to do what they can but adepts just don't do well against this composition they don't hit that hard against non-armored unit or non-light units and yeah adepts going down left and right blinking on top of all of them you can hear the adepts screaming as they die it's 163 to 42 supply for gosu mott at any point i expect for ir to tap out at this point the army is dead and that's it for ir calls the well played is defeated Gosu Mod is victorious and for Iyer leaves the game. Woo! So for a lot of buildup, that was a pretty intense last couple of <laughs> minutes. For Iyer poked out, kind of lost the Mothership Core, got flanked there from the high ground, tried to retreat, couldn't really do it, lost a lot of units. And in the end, Gosu Mod just made the push in here, did a great job splitting off those extra units to take out the workers. 
here at the second base that was very smart and then also taking out this third and just really just the amount of immortals that they were was humongous the archons had a ton of kills four kills there on that one this one has two as well and just excellently well played there by gosu mott did not fall victim to they did not make legacy of the void units and a legacy of the void replay curse because there are adepts here so well played there good sir this has been falcon baladin with yet another daily blizzard upload hit that like button hit that subscribe if you like what you heard and what you saw today you can catch me on twitch twitter and facebook all at slash falcon paladin and until next time as always thanks for watching and you take care of yourself